Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this video, I wanted to share with you how I'm storing my urethane and other moisture sensitive uh, casting materials and, and mold making materials. Uh, if you're not familiar with um, urethanes, rubbers, plastics, that sort of idea, they're extremely moisture sensitive. And when they are contaminated by moisture, they can cause problems such as um, the material will bubble when it's mixed, so you won't get good clean casts, or the urethane uh, components, one part will start to crystallize in the uh, you know, exposure to the atmosphere. So um, I needed a way to be able to moderate or manage that moisture situation because I tend to buy materials in you know, the larger quantity available uh, because it's a savings and eventually I'll use it. But because I'm a small studio and I may not use these materials except for sporadic um, occasions where there might be several months between those applications, I really needed a way to improve its short, uh, sh sh I can't talk today, it's uh, shelf life. So um, what I wanted to do is uh, show you my system. It's very, very simple and has worked out very well for me and talk a little bit about um, the pros and cons of it. So, as I mentioned uh, before, many materials that you use for casting and molding are moisture sensitive, meaning if they absorb moisture, there's a problem. Simple as that. And particularly those are urethanes, but those can be um, other related compounds as well. So what I've done is I purchased a box from Home Depot, a storage box. Uh, now this box is obviously not airtight. It's got, you know, little flippy handles and the lid comes off, right? This is not nothing fancy here, but it gives me an environment that I can control climate wise a lot easier. So what I've done is I have put inside of this um, two moisture absorbing materials. Now these are materials that people will often get and use for you know, their closets or other areas that are going to get musty or moldy. This is um, let me think here. I had to look this up and I had a hard time finding it. This is because I've had this for years. All right. Rutland products. It is their damp gone. It's basically a I'm not going to take this out because it's a mess, but it's basically like a granule powder material that's hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means it absorbs moisture as opposed to um, in the uh, uh, Eurofill 11 video where I showed you something that was hydrophobic, Eurofill 11, all right? So this absorbs moisture. The package eventually gets swollen and you'll feel the weight. And that tells you that it's absorbed all the moisture that it can. Then you sprinkle it out in a cookie sheet and you bake it in the oven until it's bone bone dry, put it back in the bag and it's reusable. I've had this stuff for years, works great. I went to Home Depot to buy one more because I really wanted to keep this super dry and I wasn't able to find it at Home Depot. So what I ended up getting instead was um, Damprid. And Damprid is um, a slightly different compound in that it is a um, granular uh, moisture absorber. absorber? <laughs> and then um, as it absorbs moisture, it will actually liquefy and you'll end up with a little liquid at the bottom. And when the liquid, you know, when all the crystals are gone pretty much and it's mostly liquid at the bottom, you throw the whole container out. I have read that it is possible, possible to recharge this by baking it, but you're basically forcing it back into a crystal, uh, which is um, requires much more heating, much more difficulty and I probably will not be pursuing that. Um, so I would instead go with um, this product. I just um, have another bag in my wish list on Amazon, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put a link in the description to this product on Amazon if you're interested in getting it. It only had one review for some reason, and it was a terrible review, and it didn't match at all my, my uh, experiences with the product. So take that uh, what you will. Um, I think it's fantastic. So these two things go in here, constantly absorb all the moisture, makes sure that everything in here stays dry. What do I have in here? I have my, let me get this out here, right? I have my Reoflex. I have my Kicket that I use um, for uh, speeding up my urethane rubbers. I have my Urofill, really important. This stays dry. The directions say don't open the bag for more than a minute. 
high humid conditions, all right, my urophil's in there, I have my tints in here, my so strong tints, and I have other materials that are moisture reactive, like um, my clear polyester resin, um, which I have not used from Casting Craft. I had another bottle of this that I had done a test with. Oh, yeah, still liquid. And I left it out and it uh, crystallized rock hard, so it was useless. So now this stays in here with its catalyst. And I also have um, my polyoptic, uh, which I got from Brick in, the, uh, Brick in the Yard Supply, which is the clear compound that will be used to coat the ocean board surfaces, assuming this is still okay. And um, before I talk about that, which I am going to talk about more, this box holds more as well. I used to have my um, uh, plastic paste in here, another urethane plastic. Anything that is moisture reactive, I'm putting in this box, except my one gallon containers that sit just about this high and won't fit in this box, unfortunately. So I'm going to get a second box that's a little bit taller so I can store those as well throw in more moisture absorbers. I have had, I had my Reoflex 20 in a plastic bag with my damp gone, and I had it in there for over a year, checking this periodically, recharging this, and my Reoflex 20 stayed good the entire time. So I can't stress enough how important and helpful it is to take some kind of a precaution if you don't have a lot of materials, throw it in a double bag, double bag it in a trash bag, throw one of these in there, tie it up tight, put it in the corner, and you're definitely going to prolong the life of them. So having said that, I want to mention two things about moisture in these materials, what to look for, and um, what has not worked for me. So polyoptic, you'll notice that the bottle has been crushed, okay? This happens, and I don't know all the science behind it, but this happens when it absorbs moisture. My theory is that the moisture in the jar, all right, and when this is fully expanded, okay, the liquid level was maybe down to here, and that means there's moisture in here. When it absorbs the moisture from that air, it incorporates it into the liquid, the volume decreases, and it crushes in. I've seen this happen with my gallon containers of resins. I've seen this happen with other materials. So this is an indication that moisture has been absorbed by the material. How much? Well, you know, it, I can't say. Sometimes it's still usable, sometimes it's not. I'm going to find out later on when I go to use this, and I may have to throw it all out, which would be horrible because this would be $45 of material. This happened very quickly uh, before I started putting it in this, um, so I probably could have head that off if I had right away kept it stored properly. Now, the typical recommendation for keeping these kinds of materials moisture free for a while is to fill the container that's empty with dry gas. This is Smooth On's version, it's called Extend It, and it's basically an Aristotle can, a little, you know, who's he what's it, you'd open up the container, you'd fill the void with the gas from here, then you close that up and it should be good to go for a while. I have found that the um, dry gas can, you know, uh, I've only used extend it, but they're all the same, right? There's some kind of perfluorocarbon that, you know, drives the moisture out. I don't think they work or work well um, because even when I've done it, I've ended up with um, the, the, the contraction that you see here, and I've still ended up with moisture problems. Um, so perhaps for short-term storage, you want to just be on the safe side. You can throw in a little dry gas psh, 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 in your containers before you seal them up, and it's probably going to give you some protection. But I can't honestly recommend it based on my own personal experience, um, and uh, hopefully um, you, uh, get the sense that, right, I'm, I'm not going to pimp every product that I have on hand. Um, I, I really have been disappointed with the performance of the extended dry gas. And so that was actually what drove me to move to this system. So that's my thoughts on storage. It's very short. It's very simple. Buy something that's a desiccant. That's another word they'll sell it by, right? Or humidity reducer or a mold a remover from closets, all of that. I'm going to put a link to this product. Get a box, 
throw it in there, put all your materials in there, check it periodically, make sure it's still activated. In the winter, we've had very, very low humidity. This hasn't changed at all. Uh, in the middle of August, when the humidity in the basement is 65, 70%, I have a feeling this will need to be replaced. So um, check them from time to time to make sure that it's still doing its job. But uh, with this box, I'm able to put in quite a few materials and, uh, and that has been a fantastic asset to um, keep all my materials dry and to keep them all organized. Here they are. I wanna do casting, I wanna do mold making, grab this, off I go. And I'll have to have the second box for my taller containers, but that's doable as well. So there you go, tips on storing your moisture sensitive casting materials. So that gives you a look at the method I'm using to store all of my moisture sensitive materials. And it, I just wanna stress uh, one final time that you know it can be done with a simple system, a bag, a box, a few moisture absorbing compounds. And making that small, small step can save you a lot of money in the long run. As uh, over the years that I have been being Terranscapes, I have uh, had many materials go bad, you know, not tons and tons, but definitely enough that, you know, especially when you need it and you go to like, oh, I just want to make this mold real quick and you open up the container and it's completely unusable. So um, get yourself a box, get yourself a bag, get yourself a couple bags of uh, Damp Gone. Um, and again, I'll have the link in the description down below and ignore the single Amazon review that was negative for it uh, because I do think it's the best product I've seen out there because it's reusable and has been reusable for me for many years and very effective. Um, don't want to forget, I thought I had one more thing. Oh, I do remember now. Um, and make sure that you check these materials more frequently when the humidity gets higher. Of course, it's going to depend on where you live. But I know here, especially in the studio, which is in a basement, the humidity level gets insanely high in the summer. And so, you know, it might be the kind of thing where I need to check that every three weeks um, just to make sure that they are still absorbing moisture and if not, recharge them or replace them as needed. Um, so I hope you found this helpful. I know that if you are doing casting with any kinds of moisture sensitive materials, if you do these things, it will save you money. So. Uh, Take that what you will. Um, and uh, if you have any questions or comments, you know, questions about what I'm doing, materials I've used, problems that I've had, um, you know, feel free to uh, put a question or comment down below. Um, if you know something about the bottles collapsing that I'm wrong about in terms of my theory about it absorbing moisture from the, the air in the container, please, of course, let me know down below. You know, I was always, always, I always appreciate learning something new myself. So uh, thank you once again for joining me. I do appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you'll come back soon because you know I will be back soon with another Terrence video.